Okay, I hope I can remember everything I want to say about this one. This build was uh, pretty special for me um, in a few reasons. Uh, one being just how big and, and amazing and complex it is, how many parts there were, how long it took. It was a rather large project, certainly the biggest by far that I've done so far with my 3D printer. Um, it's a traction engine, as you can see. Uh, if you're not familiar with the term, a traction engine is uh, the term they use for tractors. It's actually where the word tractor comes from, I think. Uh, but uh, it's usually reserved uh, lately for steam-powered tractors, they call it a traction engine. And this is uh, obviously not steam-powered, it's made out of plastic, but uh, it's meant to uh, be a model of a steam-powered tractor called a traction engine. And it's an amazing design. Uh, it, I mean, an absolutely amazing design. Who, the, the guy who uh, originally did it is very talented and was uh, obviously put a lot of work into it. Um, many hours of design that I can't even imagine. Uh, it took me more than 50 hours, hit the camera, more than 50 hours to uh, just print the parts, and that doesn't count reprints or anything like that. Uh, easily 51, 52 hours of print time, more than a half a kilogram of material total, uh, you know, and various things. I got this black PETG, and the green is PETG, and the gray and the red is PETG. Um, some of the gray parts, uh, some of the shinier parts are uh, PLA. This is that gold PLA. I got a little bit of that copper PLA here and there. Uh, just an outstanding model. I, I just can't believe how well made it is. Um, the person who made it uh, is called Cabbage Heart on Thingiverse. Um, and here's his page. And uh, you can see lots of pictures there. There's a YouTube video you can watch and see it in action. And there's all the parts and there's many, many, many parts. Um, the amazing thing about this one, compared to a lot of things on Thingiverse, sometimes uh, you know, there's usually a lot of instructions on how to put it together, or maybe there's not. It just kind of depends. Um, this one is the one that I just one of the best I've ever seen. He actually provided a full color PDF assembly guide, and it's got just all the details you need, various comments about it. Uh, it's a very complete manual. You can see, you know, all the steps you have to follow. There's a wiring diagram of how to hook it up if you want to use remote control, which I did. Um, and I just used that same uh, Hobby King motor, uh, radio that I talked about in the other videos. And uh, as you can see here, it's just step by step. You just go along and you assemble all the parts. And look at all the parts there are. My gosh, there's easily over 100 3D printed parts. Um, I lost track and there's, you know. Uh, but again, uh, there's the wiring diagram. Uh, again, it was really nice. Here's a printed parts list, and it shows each part, how many you need to build, and what it looks like, and, you know, a space for you to write in a comment. So, of course, you know, you print this out, at least these pages. See, here's, you need two of those, all right, not just one. <laughs> That's another thing. Sometimes you have to figure that out by looking at the pictures, but this guy, he really, uh, really did a great job. I, I can't say enough about how impressed I am with the effort here, uh, everything about it, uh, the design itself, how it looks, how well designed it is, and then, you know, just the thought and care and, and effort that went into presenting it to the world, right? And, and so I was very sad to read in the comments that uh, Ron Provis, the Cabbage Heart, passed away. He passed away last year. Um, somebody wrote that in the comments uh, that, that uh, when they were asking questions, it must have been a family member that had access to the account. And it was very sad to hear. And even though I didn't know Ron, I, you know, I couldn't help but feel a sense of loss when I read that. And so I decided to uh, kind of dedicate this one to him um, just because I, I felt like, uh, I don't know, a kindred spirit, somebody who obviously uh, contributed to the, to the world and touched me all the way across the world through space, even after his death. So. Uh, you know, that just is an interesting thing at the time we live in that, that that can happen. And I was able to enjoy this amazing model, and I've had so much fun with it. And uh, so let's take a look at it here. Let's take a little closer look at um, the model itself. So here's the model. Um, it's pretty big, as you can see, if I put it in my hands here. It's quite large. Um, it's all assembled. 
got lots and lots of little pieces. You can see this wheel here, each one of these spokes is a different piece and each one has two screws. Two screws here and two screws on the back over there and this one does. <laughs> and this is three parts of the rim and, and there's just tons and tons of parts. You can go online and see that. I want to drop a part here for my care. Always got comes a little shovel. Isn't that cute. And uh, somebody else made this little coal bed. I'll have to look at the comments there to see. I can't remember the username who did that. I put that in there. Um, I went ahead and customized a couple things. One thing was I put my name on it. Uh, so I put my name on the name ring, right? The name plate. I didn't have a name on it, so I just went into Tinkercad and uh, you know put some text on there. It's really hard to do text that small. I'm surprised that worked at all because I tried to do a plaque uh, to dedicate this to Ron and just put his name on it and say designed by. Um, but I couldn't quite fit that in. But I did manage, I finally figured out a way. I was playing around in Tinkercad and I was able to make this plaque. And the main reason why I made this plaque is because this is such an impressive model and I just wanted to have his name on it to recognize that he did it and so that uh, whenever I show this to somebody they can ask about it and I can tell them about good old Ron because he must have been an awesome guy. I didn't know him, but he must have been a fun guy because he must have had, I would imagine, uh, trains and all kind of fun stuff that I would have liked. So <laughs> I'm sure if he and I ever met, we'd have got along famous. Anyway, um, this will be dedicated to Ron. Uh, it's a really great model. If you've got uh, the time and the patience and a 3D printer, you can put this together. All of the parts are there. He's even got in the manual uh, all the electronic parts you need, all of the screws and nuts. There were some uh, bearings, some metal rods. Uh, nothing, nothing too difficult. Um, like I said, I did print out the manual. You can see, you know, as I went along. Um, with the manual, I just went, I printed it black and white, I didn't need it to be in color, but uh, just so I could go in and make notes what color I was going to print each part in, um, whether I pr printed it, whether I had it sliced, whether I had it printed, I could make notes as I was going along and keep track of where I was because there's literally hundreds of parts. And I can't even tell you, it was a big cardboard box full of parts. And uh, one of the things that I would do a little bit different if I did it again, I printed all the parts. Um, independently, you know, or, or, you know, I got through printing all the parts before I started the assembly. That's not a bad idea, but the reason why I did that was because some of the parts are very small and I wanted to, you know, I have the Prusa printer. I haven't had any problems with it uh, in terms of uh, very few times have I had where you have multiple parts on a bed and, and you kind of regret having too many parts on a bed because the print fails or something and you, you lose them all. That, that hasn't really happened to me. I've had a couple where the one part fell off. And then I'm, you know, making a big mess on the on the board. But uh, the Prusa printer, in short, has been very uh, reliable. So, man, I had, you know, the entire bed full of some of these little parts, and uh, and I put skirts around them and uh, stuff so that it would stick to the bed. But uh, when uh, when I tried to identify it later, some of them were very similar. It was a little bit tricky to identify. So I think if I did it again, I would kind of print as I go. Um, not worry too much about trying to get a bed full of uh, parts or whatever. <laughs> um, it would have probably made it a little bit easier. But uh, other than that, um, it was a joy to put together. Like I said, it took a little while. I'm having a ball with this thing. Um, another interesting thing is this uh, this character here. If you read the comments, and I highly suggest you go to the website and read the comments if, if you're inter interested in this. But uh, this guy, uh, Ron had this guy in his, and everybody asked, where did that guy come from? Is that a 3D model? <laughs> and it's not. It's a, it's a commercial product, um, and uh, he describes what it is. It's uh, made by, uh, um, I can't remember the training company right now, but uh, uh, a company that makes uh, props for, well, makes model trains and stuff. And uh, he called it Fred. And uh, man, I didn't think, how would I find one of those? I couldn't find it for the longest time, and I kept looking for something similar that I could put in there. And here in the United States, we don't really have as big, I think, of a, uh, following for, for hobby trains and stuff, especially the larger gar garden size, which is what this is for. And so I really haven't was having a hard time, and the company that makes it, they only sell it in the UK, 
I couldn't even find it on Amazon. Or eBay was pretty much my only choice. And all of a sudden, at the last minute, well, I don't know at the last minute, but I, I just kept looking and looking and looking. And I was about to, to try to find somebody to help me buy it in the UK when this showed up on eBay. Boom. <laughs> so I paid about two or three times what it's worth to get it from eBay and get it here uh, from uh, the UK, but that's okay. Uh, I'm happy I've got it. It's the perfect guy, I think, to, to drive the uh, traction engine. So that's where that comes from. Um, I said, like I said, uh, you know, go to, go, to, uh, go to the Thingiverse page here. Of course, I'll put a link in the video so you can go to this uh, site and uh, check it out. Watch the video, um, read the comments. Uh, and, and uh, you know, learn about it if you're interested in it. It's a very interesting model. I think it's one of the best things, uh, so far by far, is the best thing that I've seen on uh, Thingiverse. And uh, there's more to it. There's more, uh, if you go to uh, Ron's, uh, Ron's uh, personal th uh, things, where am I supposed to go here? Uh, I'll have to go to his uh, site. If you go to Ron, on pros is his name. If you go to uh, here and you go to his designs, looky here. He made uh, he made this awesome trailer to go with it. I I'd love to build that, but uh, wow, I'm a little uh, <laughs> I'm a little busy at the moment. And it took forever to build this thing, but I certainly would like to build uh, some accessories for it. You know. So anyway, very interesting build. Um, check him out. Check out Ron. He's got other interesting stuff. There's a nice little steam engine and stuff. So. Uh, very interesting stuff. Yes, I did forget something. Um, <clears throat> this thing is so cool when it runs, and I'm going to show you here in a minute. All right, and maybe I already have, depending on how I edit this video. But uh, uh, when this thing's running, it, it, these things actually move, and it makes a noise, even though there's a, just an electric motor that's obviously making it go. Um, it actually sounds a little bit like a real engine. It sounds because there's lots of knocking and things going on, and you know, you can, it has a certain uh, pitter patter to it like a real engine and I think that's really cool so I'm going to close off the video here with uh, this thing running a uh, another toy prop uh, a Loesco uh, uh, merry-go-round or not merry-go-round but it's Ferris wheel and, and uh, it runs the Ferris wheel really good it's fun to watch it do that and it's I think it's interesting just to listen to it go and how it sounds almost like a real steam engine so I'm going to let the, the video run out for a couple minutes of uh, so you can hear this thing run Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, uh, comment, like, whatever. Thanks. I really appreciate it.